Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We'll scroll on down to the school. Pop on to the school. Let's go to school! Yeah! All right, we've done lessons on display objects, configuration objects and animation, functions and events, abstraction, arrays and loops, and then we just did a video on conditionals. So we're about to see debugging. Let's pop into conditionals and make sure we do a little review there. And there's a couple things I wanted to say about conditionals still before we go to debugging. So it's a very important part of um, coding is logic. And logic guides what happens and when to create the flow of the application. A conditional is what we use to apply the logic. And that's really an if statement. Like if the hour is greater than 8, eat breakfast. And we combine that with random numbers to get lifelike code that's like odds for games and simulations and artificial intelligence, generative art. And there's a good example here in the coding tour of Danzen. It's sort of pseudocode based. Uh, this is a mystery that won uh, Canadian New Media Awards, Programmer of the Year for this, for a 13 nested conditional. So lots of conditionals going on in there. Woohoo! Uh, secret keeping capabilities and off-screen character interaction and, and that kind of stuff. So we should have a look there. You can review the conditionals here. And we, I think we did most of the things in here. The one thing is that, that I want to see is the equal operator, the double equals that is, and uh, strict equals and then not. We didn't really talk about these and, and they're kind of important. <laughs> Quite important. <laughs> All right, so we'll go in and, and take a peek at that. There's also down here places to practice. So remember to come in and practice this stuff too. See all these different ways we can do the conditionals, else statements, else if statements, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's go back to the code that we were working on and we'll open this up in a browser and refresh ourselves with what we were doing. We had an assembly line that was showing Wow, that's a good string of uh, squares or rectangles we're right in the middle here. There should be half circles, half rectangles. And we went over here, it was all circles or some circles here, uh, some squares, blah, blah, blah. There's a square and then on this side, it's mostly, well, that's all squares. It's mostly squares here with some circles. All right, so we were adjusting the odds with a slider, but what if we wanted to find out if these if we were rolling a random number between 1 and 10 and including and those were whole numbers what if we wanted to find out if it was exactly 3 and then perhaps we could add a defective a defective shape here oh the poor evil triangle <laughs> let's do that uh or the poor embarrassed triangle oops i'm on the wrong line i'm on the wrong assembly line all right let's uh let's try that then and that looks like this so we're right in here in our interval there we are rolling the random number we can say if x that random number is double equal to three then we'll do this stuff right here we'll make the shape a triangle so copy that make it a triangle and we'll make it a color of red avoiding the the, the dimensions the three sides dimensions we'd have to put in okay so there's a red triangle now this doesn't quite work do you see why if x is 3, hey, that's the shape. But then it does this if statement next. This is a different statement here. And what if it's 3 is less than the slider? Then it's going to replace shape with a rectangle. We'll never see that triangle. So what we really wanted was to join that and with an else if. So if x is double equal to 3, then do this. Else if x is less than the slider, else make a circle. So there we go. All right, this double equal three, that's the comparison operator. This, on the other hand, is the assignment operator. This puts three into x, and therefore that's true. That's consider that evaluates to three. And because three gets put into x, and then it tells us, uh, sits there and says if x, and if x is three, then that's true. So it will do the red red triangle all the time. I don't want to try that though. I want, I want to see this uh, see this defective thing go here. So this is only when x is three are we going to see a red triangle. Let's take a look. Refresh here. 
Bum, 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 bum. Hey, the assembly line's looking pretty good these days, isn't it, Frank? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's almost been perfect. Like, look at all... Oh, <laughs> oh my word! Hey! Uh, there's that embarrassed triangle. <laughs> Am I really on the circle of squares? How to get a, how to get over here? Yeah, see, there we go. Creative coding. <laughs> Uh, I'm starting to feel a bit like Mr. Dress Up or something, or <laughs> one of those guys, Mr. Rogers. Hey, there's a little red triangle on our track today. Yeah, <laughs> a bad impression, I'm sure. All right. Um, so there we go. What if it's not equal to three? See that? Not equal to three. That's how we do that. Well, then it's going to happen most of the time. <laughs> and uh, the bearish triangle, maybe that's that's really what's on here. So we refresh here, and now we're getting red triangles. Because there's only going to be something else if it's not equal to three, uh, which happens. Let's see, not equal to three happens nine out of ten times. There. Oh uh, no, not not equal to three is when it's showing. Uh, three is only one out of ten times. So. It's only showing something good one out of ten times, showing the triangle nine out of ten times. Okay, so those are a couple things we wanted to mention. Uh, however, I'd like to get into the debugging now. There's a few other things with conditionals that we still didn't see. Oh, you can, maybe I should show you that. You can put the not in front of that too if you wanted to, and that reverses whatever's inside of there. We have to put brackets around that though. So not this. Uh, and then it works out something like if we had a circle out there up, up above, if we declared a circle, but we weren't sure if we put anything in it, then we could say, if there's not a circle, then carry on. And so that's the not. It sort of flips what's inside of here. All right, that'll do. And where shall we leave this? Let's leave it with the double equals, just in case we come back to it. Now we've got a surprise. So shifting gears, boot, boop, boop, boo, we're going to get into debugging. So we'll pop on into here. This is a build it test. And now a bug is when something breaks. Now imagine I, I, <laughs> I just experienced this yesterday. Oh my word. Uh, I'm going to be giving a build it test where the students have to build something. So we've got these you know, 24 students in a college building with Zim. And I just gave them a practice build it test yesterday. It was three hours long, but it's a practice. And so I let them ask questions and I'd come over and help them debug their issue if, if they got stuck for too long. And basically it was hands up the whole time. I was just <laughs> three hours of constant debugging. You can imagine what that would be like. So I've seen a number of things that would, would cause, cause bugs in this code. So let's see the code. Uh, we'll do this in a browser here, open in the browser, and in comes that, we get a dime, that's a Canadian dime, and we do a hit test. So as we pick this up and drag, we do a hit test, coin goes in the slot, this goes on up, and we're left with the seasons. So we're paying money to sort of witness, ooh, look at that. Ooh, there's the season, so I'm, I'm moving this slider back and forth. And the slider is controlling a mask. This rectangle's a mask that is masking the snow or the, the winter. So that means the winter can only be seen in wherever this rectangle is. It's a nice effect, isn't it? We've got some easing on that slider. So let's try it out. That's an emitter that's falling. We've got uh, two, two functions, one that made the fall, one that made the winter. Then we've got another function that made the, whatever this is called, the interface. And then if we refresh here, this was the last function that overlays this intro. All right, so let's go in and talk about bugs. Bugs, uh, well, a bug was named early on in the coding uh, times, back in whatever, the 50s or something like that, maybe even the 40s, it was 50s, so, where apparently a moth flew into the circuits and this was back in the time where maybe maybe the circuits were showing. Well, I suppose a moth could probably, well, maybe not get into a modern day computer. But it was found, it was found by a woman coder at the time. And uh, yeah, it sort of, there was a shift. Initially, 
uh, coding was thought of as a clerical job and so <laughs> given to people who could type which were the women at the time women and so many early coders were were women and then uh, then it shifted uh, now it's shifting back perhaps our, our class proud to say is over half women so that's great um, obviously there's <laughs> no difference there but it's, it's nice to see. And traditionally in coding, there's usually less women in classes. So hopefully it will change. All right. So where do we get to? Uh, yeah, we're, um, we're checking out a bug here. Now, bugs, uh, right. And we were talking about the story of the bug, right. If it was a little bug in the computer and then it didn't work. So imagine that a moth flew onto this little comma right here. There. And the computer couldn't read the comma we would end up with this. Uh, the white screen of wonder. I wonder what happened. F11. Oh, <laughs> let's full screen that white screen of wonder. F12, the other one over there. So it gives F12 is a way to see the console here where we can see any errors that come up. Now, sometimes there's not an error, but your program still doesn't work. Here it says there's a syntax error. We're missing a bracket after a property list and it tells us where the bracket got opened on line 77 but it does say on 82 that's where the error is let's have a look here so 82 it's saying we're missing a bracket here now the problem is is you look at this and go well i don't want to put a bracket there if you're very literal i'm on line 82 and i don't want to put a bracket there i already have a bracket here <laughs> and uh you're kind of going scratching your head a bit. Well, so sometimes look at the line before where the bug is, where the error is. That needs a comma there. All right. If we lose a colon like that, first of all, Adam is trying to tell me that. Oh, that's red. Hmm. Are you sure? And we refresh here. And now it's saying a syntax error missing a colon after the property ID. Sometimes you have to know what these words mean. Property ID. Uh, well, I suppose that's a property. Well, actually, this whole thing could be considered a property. This is an object literal. So here's the property name and the property value, or the property ID and the property value. It's saying it's missing a colon after the property ID right there. So that's not too bad a one. What if we used a new emitter and forgot to put the capital E on the class? So we refresh that here. Reference error, emitter is not defined. Indeed, there nowhere has we def defined an emitter and we're trying to make a new emitter. That means we just need the capital letters there on the class. Oh, and don't do something like this. Const, we can do this, emitter is equal to, no problem. This is capitals, and that's lowercase. But do not, <laughs> do not call it emitter. Uh, do not call it emitter like that because this will obscure our class name emitter and we get a lovely error message like this reference error can't access lexical declaration emitter <laughs> i mean come on give me a break <laughs> hoity toity this is written by somebody from oxford i'm afraid your lexical declaration's wrong and they they soften the blow a little bit with the uh, with the old can't with the apostrophe. <laughs> what did it say the last time? Did it say can't? Were they consistent there? Anyway, uh, you don't want to do that. And sometimes it's tricky that you know you don't, uh, especially missing brackets. I, I don't know if this is going to give us one. Let's let's try it out. So we take away that bracket. What do we see? Syntax error: missing a round bracket after argument list seventy eight. No, that's okay. So we're missing that. What if we miss the, the end of the one here? What happens then? Sometimes the brackets go all the way to the end and it tells you there's an error at the end of your code and you're going, oh, great. So somewhere in there I'm missing a bracket. Uh, let's see what this one does. Did it not run? Did I save it? Refresh. Oh, it's having a clog. Syntax error, missing a bracket opened on 77 and it was way back on 96 
So that was good too. It, it knew what was going on. I'm not maybe that's fine for the object literal. Perhaps it's a function bracket. Let's try that. Take off the function bracket and let's see where that goes. 325. It was expecting expected expression got you know a, a round bracket on 325 and you're going uh what 325 oh uh, so anyway that's way the heck at the bottom and it's nowhere near where you forgot your bracket but i guess it couldn't figure it out it's a function we can put functions inside a function so here we've declared a function i don't even know where it was actually <laughs> we can undo uh, that's a technique. A technique is to say, yikes. Um, so what this is telling you really is you should only code one or two lines and make sure that it's working. If you if you were to, I don't know, delete a bunch of stuff and then go on to somewhere else and start coding and then test it, and maybe what you deleted accidentally was this a bracket here. But if you undo, you can find out, well, it was work. I know it was working. If I undo, I can find out maybe what I've done to make it break. And if you've accidentally deleted a bracket, then your undo might show you that. All right. Um, so there's a tip, I suppose. A couple tips then. Look in the console for errors, obviously. Uh, sometimes, though, there's no error. For instance... Imagine this, uh, we go on up and say, for some reason, we didn't even call make fall. So we're not calling the function. If we refresh here, uh, in comes my intro, I pop the dime in, plays, and I'm going, oh, where'd my atom go? Oh, it's broken. I'm not getting an error. What happened? Oh, it's broken. Well, it's broken because the function was never called. So that's one thing you have to watch out for is uh, if we we can go to the makefall function, scroll on down. Was this makefall? Uh, was <laughs> scroll on down to the makefall function. It's right here. Uh, if you're learning, if you're first starting, uh, recommendation would be to console.logger zog make fall right here, and that will tell me is my function running. Because there's no point in saying, oh, you know, oh, something's broken here. What's wrong with my fall container? It's not showing my fall. Did I make a mistake? Is this the wrong dimension? Did I forget to add two? Maybe I forgot to add it. You know, all these questions about what you did in your code. And the answer really is the code's not even running because you forgot to call it. <laughs> now, that's especially, yeah, that, that happens especially early on. I would say, say, you, say you, you've only made 20 functions. In your life probably uh, five of those times you forgot to call them it's just something that is very common early on you make the function you see all this code there you go that's gonna run and then it doesn't run uh, if it's an event function maybe your event was put on an object that didn't exist or wasn't there or that yeah you know, who knows you might uh, well that would show up in the console I guess if it if the thing didn't exist but maybe it's at a different time. You haven't clicked on the thing. <laughs> that happens a lot too. <laughs> hey, it's not working. Nothing's happening. And that's because you put your function in a click event and you haven't clicked anything yet. So that would help you. You'd be looking at this saying, well, that's not running. And you'd scratch your head and go, all right, I have to click on something before it runs. So sometimes when things run will make a difference. Okay. So you can zog right in there in your function. Make sure your function's running. If it's running, hey, there we go. I know it's running. Take it out. Okay, here's a tip for you. More debugging. Make winter. Watch what happens if make winter doesn't run. So we save that up and we refresh here. Isn't it funny how intimate I am with this code? <laughs> Like I said, uh, after going through three hours of constant debugging, I kind of know the things that were happening. So here it's saying, type error, winter is undefined. What's happening is in make interface, in the make interface function, it needs to use winter. It needs to put that mask that we made on winter. So if we don't run make winter, uh, see how we have fall here? We don't have a winter. Uh, let's go down and take a look at that and talk about it. We will run it, however. So we're down here. We're going down to make winter. Here's make winter. Now, if we comment this one out, that make winter, and we put the var inside, 
then here's what's going to happen. The function make winter is running. The var winter is this container. And then the emitter and all these other things are put in the container. We haven't seen an emitter yet, but we have those in upcoming lessons, so that will be fun. Um, but for now, winter is holding all the winter stuff. And we've put the variable inside there. Or it could be a let in our modern day. There's a let inside there. And what that means is this will only be available inside the make winter function. So down below here, in the function make interface, when we try and use the winter, so here it is, uh, there's a rectangle, here it is, winter.setMask, it won't know what winter is, and you get this error message. Ready? Refresh. Reference error, winter is not defined on 165. 165 is saying winter is not defined. If you were in Chrome, you might get a slightly different error message. Shall we try it in Chrome? Uh, I have to open up a Chrome. Chrome. Desktop reveal! It's okay. I have a clean desktop today. So there it is in Chrome. If I F11 in Chrome, oh, <laughs> if I F12 in Chrome, I get this. Oh, it says the same thing. Winter is not defined. Um, you might get an error message saying cannot access some method on undefined. That, that also comes up. Uh, perhaps we can see where that is. By the way, if you go F12 to the console and this is what you see, that means it may be the first time going into F12. You just have to tab on over to the console to see that. And then once you've done the console once, it will stay, stay console for you. Let's so open this back up again. And bring back this guy here. So it's saying winter is undefined. All right. Um, the reason is, I once again, inside of this function, which is sort of parallel to the winter function, we have no access to the variable winter. So that's why we put the variable out here. Or indeed, well, we can't just let winter like that. We'd have to assign it equal to null or undefined or something anyway. So var is there. So we've got a var winter outside. Now down below, it will know what winter is. However, uh, maybe this is where it comes up. Let's try this. If we var winter inside here like that, now what's going to happen? We've got our var winter outside, but we've got our a var winter inside, and here's where we get that error that I was looking for. Refresh. Uh, type error, winter is undefined. <laughs> I guess it isn't. Uh, maybe they're in Chrome, but I'm not going to bother looking. I know at some point I was getting error messages that basically said uh, down below here, that it could not use set mask on undefined, which is a very similar type of error. Basically, winter is undefined. We haven't put anything in it. Why haven't we put anything in it? Look, here's what I'm putting in winter. But once again, this is the variable winter inside of make winter. This variable winter is a different variable. That's scope. So if you declare inside, it's only available inside the function. So that's a scope issue. And often, as you're learning code, scope issues are one of the most difficult things to figure out what's going on. So if we don't put a var there, then what happens is this. As we create the container and go to store it in winter, JavaScript says, oh, wait a minute, you didn't declare winter, so I'm going to look outside the function, one level outside the function. Is there a winter there that I can use? So it looks outside the function and finds this winter, and therefore it puts the new container into that winter. If it doesn't find that winter, then it would look outside this function, which is, I think, our our frame.ready function, and it would say, is there any variable declared outside there? And if not, it would make a global function. Uh, you know, it keeps on looking outside all, all containers. If it doesn't find any, uh, or all blocks of code, if it doesn't find any, then it declares there. So we're, what were we wanting to do here? We were wanting to keep that like that. And there's our winter. So that's a scope bug issue. 
Another thing that happens is the following, I suppose, when you don't see something. So let's try her out. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to get here. No error. We put the coin in, comes up, and it's just all autumn. And we're kind of going, oh, what happened to our winter? Well, uh, this is a common problem in when we're working on the canvas here. We've made the winter container. We put the emitter in there, all is looking good, except we have not added the container to the stage. We forgot the dot add to, or the dot center, or the dot pose, or the dot loc to add it to whatever container we want to add it to. Um, sometimes we're, we're down here and we're saying, no, 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 look, we centered it on winter, and we're looking at this going, no, we, we added it to winter, but then we may not have added the container itself, which is what happened. We didn't add the container. So if we don't add the container, everything else we add to this container, we can't see either. <laughs> All right, so um, let me show you. Let's let's take it where we're running probably close to time on our, on our lesson today on debugging. But why don't we just take a scan through some of the tips that we provided at Zim. All right, so we'll go back to the Zim site. There's, first of all, there's a whole part on debugging showing the console. There's syntax type errors and various typos that you might do. There's how to use logging or zogging to, to find out things in the console. So there's all sorts of tips. Here are times when you, when you make an interval. You might want to zog that you're in the interval. Zog that you're, you've added a function in the ticker. Zog that you've clicked on something or an animation's done. Zog for timeouts and loops. You might want to zog to make sure that we're getting the right loop number. So console.log is your friend. Uh, so if nothing shows, here's various reasons uh, why nothing might show. Perhaps the internet's down. You've got an error. Check the console. You haven't added it to the stage. You forgot to update the stage. So that, that's, a, that's a good one there. You forgot to update the stage. Uh, you forgot the stage. Well, that is the stage.update. Ah, stage.update doesn't happen just at the end of your code. It also happens in various events. Like when you click on something and make a change, you might want to update the stage after. You might need that. Remember to add the container. And finally, if all of these things don't happen, the uh, the Zen, <clears throat> the final Zen debugging tip, if you've ever tried to debug a file for more than five minutes, okay, the five minute rule, if you've been debugging for longer than five minutes, you have to confirm that you're working on the right file. Uh, some of you uh, try different files out. You've got versions this, version that, version that. You're making all these changes. You're trying to see the results. It's still broken. Well, maybe you're working on the wrong file. So you've got to confirm that somehow. Do a zog. Make sure that your zog shows up. Oh, yeah, this is the right file or not the right file. Or change the color of a rectangle. That color showed up. This is definitely the right file. If the color still stays the same, you're going, well, wait a minute. I changed the color. It's not showing there. Maybe I'm on the wrong file. Okay, so there's some practice on debugging. Uh, however, I wanted to take you to the Zim tips because Zim tips also have tips on debugging. So we're going to go back to Zim, scroll on down to the gold bars. And in the gold bars, there is tips. So basically most of the things here, half of the things here might help you with debugging. Here's one on errors. Here's one on missing. Indenting will help you with bugs to figure out where your your brackets are. So uh, you can also ask. Uh, I mean, try and figure out your own bugs, obviously, but uh, you're welcome to come and join us in Zim Slack, and perhaps we can help if there's anything. Uh, changes. Oh, that's, uh, that's general changes to Zim. Now, of course, changes to your framework or your library can introduce bugs, possibly. You can't necessarily start, take your your old code and run it on new versions of Zim or your library because maybe something has changed. So uh, there's change logs to show you about that. But anyway, let's go to the errors and see what the errors are. So F12, this is trying to describe different type of errors. Ah, this last one is very good. In general, if you can't figure something out, simplify. Comment out code until it works again. Or even if um, take the problem code and put it into a new file. So sometimes it's so bad, you just have to say, well, 
this thing has to be working. Maybe it's something else in my code that's doing it. I don't know. You could take out the part, just start a new file, and try it in there and say, ah, oh, it's working in here, so it must be something. Or it's not even working in here. If it's not working once you've extracted it, then perhaps it's easier to debug because you're only looking at the small specific amount of code. So uh, that's good. And then also remember to save your file. Ah, there we go. Part of t testing the right file is make sure <laughs> that, that file is saved. So the little blue dot up top, make sure that the file is saved. So there you go. Debugging tips. See what I mean? And what about missing? So there's Zog describing when to Zog. You should Zog uh, create JS, retina, distill. There's something on missing somewhere. <laughs> Hit test. Hit test run into not bugs, but it may not work as expected. For instance, a hit test might be um, constantly hitting, and your score is going up really fast, or it, it's it's creating thousands of buttons all of a sudden, going blah, 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 and you're going, oh my gosh, what's going on? Well, when you hit test and you're in a ticker, a ticker goes really fast, and if you hit something, maybe it will continue to hit, and therefore, if you're adding a function or adding a, a button there or something. It could happen lots of times. So there's how to fix that in hit tests. You can go read that. OK, I'm going to go back up to the top here and just find the one that says missing. Missing. When you're coding, sometimes things don't show up. All right, and then you've got all of these things to go through again. So that's there as well. And here it is, the Zen 5-minute rule. All right, issues on indenting. I mentioned that. And there's some examples of slightly bad indenting that will... Indenting will never break your code. It just breaks how you see the code. You think that this is all inside there. Maybe it's not because your indenting showed it was. Usually your indenting shows it's not inside of something and you misunderstand your code. So uh, you're making coding twice as hard if you don't indent properly. Right, especially as you're learning. So indent, indent our boxes. Imagine, you know, imagine a messy room with stuff all over the place. You know, trying to figure out what's going on. If you put things in boxes, how easy it is to find things. That that kind of feeling. So uh, sometimes coders are messy. Don't be messy with your brackets. You can be messy in the real world, but coders are not messy with their brackets. Okay, anybody who has become a coder realizes that indenting and, well, not brackets, I guess indenting, is of the utmost importance. So we'll leave it there for a uh, learn JavaScript with creative coding. And luckily, when we come back, we get to uh, start in on a building lesson where we just get to build some stuff together, see some art. Woo -hoo. But before that, we have to see this. Ay, ay, ay. Drone. Now, someone who is controlled by someone else. Droner. Now, someone who controls a drone. Droning. Third. Act of controlling a drone. Droner. Control your friends. Drone must Right. So, does that sound like fun? You get to be controlled by your friends. Unfortunately, that app I don't think is on the App Store anymore. It ran for a bunch of years. It was uh, made in Flash in the early days. And uh, Flash then ran into various security update requirements and just never got updated. It's a complex multi-user app. All right. Uh, this has been Dr. Abstract at Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. Uh, thanks for being here. If you've made it this far, then you'll probably want to join us at zimjazz.com slash slack. And if this happened to be the first video that you've seen, obviously go back and look at the next ones. And hopefully you're looking forward to the future ones. Please share. Take it easy. Bye-bye.